In chapter 8, <clears throat> Access Technologies, man's greatest invention is not the television, nor is it the radio. It seems to me it isn't the airplane, it isn't the car. As wonderful as these inventions are, it's not the computer or the cellular phone or any device or machine that is known. No nuclear weapon or war ever shook the world like man's greatest invention, the book. That's from Charles Osgood. For the longest time, Access described the manner in which customers reached the network for the transport of voice devices. In the last 20 years, however, the definition has changed dramatically. In 1981, over 30 years ago, IBM changed the world when it introduced the PC. And in 1984, the Macintosh arrived, bringing well-designed and logically organized, not to mention approachable, computing power to the proverbial masses. Shortly thereafter, hobbyists began to take advantage of eminent, emergent modem technology and created online databases. The first bulletin board systems that allowed people to send simple text messages to each other. This accelerated the modem market dramatically. And before long, data became a com common component of local loop traffic. At that time, there was no concept of instant messenger or of the degree in which email would fundamentally change the way people communicate and do business. At the same time, the business world found more and more applications for data and the need to move that data from place to place became a major contributor to the growth in data traffic on the world's telephone networks. In those heady early days, Data did not represent a problem for the bandwidth limited local loop. The digital information created by a computer and intended for transmission through the telephone network was received by a modem. Connected, it converted into a modulated analog waveform that fell victim to the 4 kHz voice band and fed to the network without incident. As we mentioned in an earlier chapter, the modem's job was, and still is, quite simple. Invoke the Wizard of Oz protocol. When the computer is doing the talking, the modem must make the network think it's talking to a telephone. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. Over time, modem technology advanced, allowing local loop to provide higher and higher bandwidth. This increased bandwidth was made possible through clever signaling schemes that allowed a single signaling event to transport more than a single bit. These modern modems, often called the Shannon busting modems, because they defy the limits of signaling defined by the work done by Claude Shannon in the early 20th century, are commonplace today. They allow baud levels to reach unheard of extremes and permit the creation of very high bit per signal rates. DSL, for example, uses modems at either end of the circuit to achieve extremely high bit rates over an analog facility. The analog local, local loop is used today for various voice and data applications in both business and residential markets. The new lease of life it enjoy thanks to advanced modem technology as well as a focus by installation personnel on the need to build clean, reliable, outside plant has resulted in the development of the faster access technologies designed to operate across the analog local loop. Local loop including traditional high-speed modem access, such as DSL. Access Technologies 
used to connect the customer to the network, come in a variety of forms, and offer a broad variety of connectivity options and bandwidth levels. The key to success is not to be bottlenecked. Access technology that can evolve to meet the growing customer demands for bandwidth will be the winners in this game. DSL holds an advantage as long as it can overcome the availability of challenge and the technology challenge of loop carrier restrictions. Wireless is hobbled by licensing and spectrum availability, both of which are regulatory and legal in nature rather than technology limitations.